Phil Kirpin. Um, he is the vice president for policy at Americans for Prosperity. Well, that's an evil. I've heard that's All an Americans evil. for we don't know where the money's coming we from. Don't even Phil Kirpin. Oh my gosh, they oh, those overseas mm. interests who are where the the red Chinese are, are funding. Very concerned oh, about man. where the money is <laughs> oh, coming <my>. from. <laughs> Americans for prosperity. Shadowy organizations <laughs> like the Americans for prosperity and Chamber of Commerce. Next oh. thing, are you in that cha- uh, Star Chamber? Chamber of Commerce. What do they have in common? Chamber. Gas chamber, <laughs> chamber of commerce. We don't know. Phil, welcome to the program. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good. You sound like you enjoyed that whole intro there. Well, you know, I mean, it's just it got so ridiculous last year when the, the president was just desperate for anything to focus mm-hmm. on instead of his failed policies, and he's throwing out, uh, you know, uh, we don't know who these guys are. That was we were in his stump speech. He said the name yeah. of my organization eighteen times. That's uh, that's a lot of desperation. So you you have been one of the guys who have been on the forefront for a long time um, uh, on this administration before they even were administration saying, OK, danger, danger, warning. Um, and one of the things that I, I've seen, you know, I've seen a chart of yours. Um, I don't even know when you first came up with this chart where he was going around con- Congress. He, I mean, he's I mean, it's clear anybody who doesn't see it has no eyes to see or no eyes or no ears to hear yeah and you know i did that chart about two years ago and you were one of the only people to pick up on it and uh which i really appreciated and we did get a lot of attention on that unfortunately uh, not enough attention to prevent the uh scam they used to get around the massachusetts election and enact obamacare anyway but uh you know i think the president is now you know we're about one year from the election tomorrow is the official anniversary of this election that we thought was going to change everything that uh, you know the obama would be stopped cold and mm-hmm. you know the day after the election he said oh no problem i've got other ways to skin the cat we're going to do uh, cap and trade through the epa and i've got my whole union agenda at uh, nlrb which i'll stack with seiu lawyers and now he spent the last two weeks telling us he doesn't even even need congress to do this stimulus and bailout and all the stuff from his jobs bill i mean it's completely insane uh, he he just genuinely believes that the Constitution is irrelevant, that the Congress is irrelevant, that the American people having the biggest landslide election in our lifetimes is irrelevant, and he still knows what's best for us and is going to force us to take it. I mean, this is what we're up against right now. So, so, um, because he he has a, uh, Phil has a new book um, uh, out called Democracy Denied, How Obama is Ignoring You, Bypassing Congress to Radically Transform America and How to Stop Him. That's the part I want to concentrate on, how to stop him. Well, Glenn, I think uh, we've got to demand that Congress stand up for itself and do what Article 1, Section 1 of the Constitution says is its role, which is to be the legislative branch to write the laws in this country. And unfortunately, over decades, uh, more and more power has been transferred to the permanent Mm -hmm. bureaucracy, to the regulators. Uh, I know you've talked about this being kind of the structure being in place for uh, all of these uh, transformations of society to move forward. Uh, We've got to demand that Congress step up and do what its job is supposed to be. But who are those people? Honestly, who, these guys. who are these people that will do it? I, I don't see them in Congress anymore. What do you have? Maybe 20 guys in Congress that will actually, they actually have a spine? How do they do it, Phil? Well, there's a, there's a bill that I'm really excited about, and the, the whole story behind it is Chapter 1 of the book. It's a bill called the RAINS Act, the Regulations from the Executive in Need of Scrutiny Act. And this is a bill that would actually force Congress to be in the decision loop on all of these regulations that have such a big impact on the economy and on our freedom. This is a bill that says any economically significant regulation cannot take effect unless it's passed the House and the Senate and the President has signed it or uh, has had a veto overridden. So it forces the legitimate constitutional process to be used. Used. And so it wouldn't end regulation, but it would end regulation without representation. We'd at least know exactly who to blame every time one of these things happens, because they'd have to have a vote on it. And uh, that bill's got 192 co-sponsors in the House. It's going to pass the House, and we're going to push really hard for a vote on it in the Senate. And, and we're going to tell these guys, look, you want to come back as a senator, you want to come back as a congressman, that's fine and good. But if you're not willing to do the job, if you're not willing to stand up to the administration and exercise legislative power, we'll have to find someone who is willing to. So ultimately, uh, it comes down to us. I think it comes down to citizens, activists, voters. Uh, we've got to demand better. Politicians are followers. They're not leaders. We've got to demand better from them if we want to have a chance. Do, who do you see on the horizon, Phil, that's actually any good? Because here's the problem. We have so many um, executive orders now that, I mean, the first act would be to... 
abolish all of the old executive orders. My second act would be, um, uh, except for these executive orders, to repeal all all of the Ob- Obamacare and everything else. Because you're never going to get Congress. You'll nev- This country is in so much trouble. How do you get anybody in the executive chair to pull all of these executive orders off the table, the old ones as well, not just Obama's, just pull them off the table, get rid of all this crap, and start doing it the right way? Well, that's the real that's the real challenge. And of course, Obama himself on the campaign trail claimed to be against abuses of executive oh, I power. Know. I mean, he was out there saying, oh, "I taught constitutional law for ten years. I'm not like George Bush, who's going to make it up as he goes along." And then, of course, he gets in and he says, you "Now, certain laws like the Immigration Laws, Defense of Marriage Act, I'm just not going to enforce them because I don't feel like it. Other laws that Congress rejected, I'm just going to pretend they passed anyway." And so, you know, one of the problems we have is, no matter what a presidential candidate says, once you get into office, you love presidential power, because you're the president who wields it. And so I think uh, even if we get a strong, solid conservative president who says he's going to uh, do things the right way, the constitutional way through Congress, there's going to be a strong pressure on him once he gets in not to do that. And we've got to counteract that by uh, making this a major issue, not just in the presidential race, but in the congressional races as well. We really need to force candidates to, to commit to exercising legislative power, stopping abuses of executive orders and regulations and bureaucracy and so on. And then we've got to hold them accountable. So I think, you know, if you want to demand that Congress do things the right way and stand up to the administration, the uh, solution has got to come from us, and we've got to be demanding it from Congress, no matter who the president is. Um, any, way to, um, any way to get around uh, as, as a business person? Um, I mean, Coca-Cola is, is playing, you know, they, they've just decided they're going to change their can from red and white to white with the polar bears on it. And it's not for Christmas. It's for the World Wildlife Federation. Now, now they're going to become an activist on, on, uh, on this environmental stuff. We have a story today coming out of um, uh, Maryland where they're going to, the governor is thinking about using an executive order there and get this whole um, you know, global warming agenda through, uh, through executive order in Maryland. Um, is there any way, as a, as a small business person, how do we survive the next however long this is going to last? Well, I think the uh, I think the next year is going to be very tough, and then frankly, I think the the few months after the election, uh, when I think Obama will be a lame duck president because I think he's he's going to lose, uh, are going to be an extremely perilous few months because they're going to push forward on everything that they've stalled. Because this is the scariest thing. This is the scariest thing to think about. What we're seeing right now is this administration tempered by trying to look reasonable to get reelected. And I think once they're no longer tempered by that and they can really do everything they want to do, it's going to be head spinning. How damaging! It'll be. And is and, that the uh, same frankly, if he is that the same if he win, if he wins? The same thing. Although if he wins, then it's four years and three right. months instead of just three months. So right. uh, it's a different duration of time that we're going to have to be worried about that. But uh, we're going to face it either way. And uh, frankly, you're right. Uh, the obliteration of property rights is one of the central uh, thrusts of both this administration and the broader environmental movement that's uh, been so active at the local and state level as well. And they've got access to multiple foundations with billions and billions of dollars, which is why it's especially funny when they try to say that we are we that my side has got deep pockets because compared to them, believe me, we're pikers. And oh, uh, but we do oh, we no. we've got the people on our side. And so it's interesting. The left always talks about democracy as if that's their core value. They even named their political party after it. But when it comes down to it, they don't want democracy. They don't want our elected officials to have the real power because they they know that we can win elections, that our side has got more people. There's still more conservatives in America than there are liberals by far. And so they really prefer this sort of technocratic, bureaucratic model where the elites, the college professors, the uh, experts, the people who are supposed to know better than we do uh, how to live our lives are empowered to uh, take control away from us. And that's the real fight that we're in right now in this country. It's the fight between individual freedom to run our own lives and make our own choices and to succeed or to fail. And there's a lot of lessons to be learned from failure that uh, bailouts to get in the way of, or whether we're going to have this idea of centralized control. And the tragedy of it is 
the Western European model that Obama is so enamored with is in total collapse. It is cracking up before our eyes, and he still wants to go in that direction. Oh, I and I hope we don't have to learn, learn that lesson the hard way here in America. Um, the name of the book is Democracy Denied. Uh, Phil Kirpin, Vice President for Policy uh, at Americans for Prosperity, uh, which, uh, I mean, I, I don't even know what that is. Who are these Americans, and what is this prosperity that they speak of so highly? Um, name of the book, again, Democracy Denied. Phil, thanks a lot. Um, uh, one of the good guys who has worked really hard to expose this and keep the fires burning and to keep us alive. Um, check it out wherever books are sold.